Good evening and welcome. Uh, this is Doug Blakely uh, with Sustainable Contra Costa. I'm one of the co-hosts for this evening's uh, homeowner workshop. And the screen that you have uh, open at this point uh, has a few instructions for the evening. Uh, videos are going to be turned off throughout the evening. Uh, when the opportunities arise that you may wish to uh, ask a question, uh, you will be unmuted, but we will leave your camera off. Uh, when the questions are uh, appropriate, uh, when you may have one, um, they can be relayed to the presenters either through the Q&A function or uh, you can raise your hand uh, to be called on, in which case then we will unmute you in that case, or you can also submit a question via the chat feature. Uh, all questions that are asked during the course of the workshop this evening, we will attempt to answer them, uh, but there will be a transcript of the questions sent out uh, shortly after the workshop is over, as well as other information pertaining to the workshop. Uh, that will be sent to everybody uh, who attended and everybody who registered. Uh, at the end of the evening, uh, there is a short survey. Uh, we would uh, ask that you uh, take the time to fill the survey out because that will help us in planning future events as well. Uh, we appreciate very much that you're taking the time out of your evening to join us. And uh, I'd like to move on to the next slide if we could, please. So just a reminder on a couple of the things, uh, you have controls across the bottom of your Zoom screen and the chat function is in the lower left-hand corner. Click on that and it opens uh, a window in which you can uh, type in your question. Uh, the Q&A button is on the right side of the toolbar and you can raise your hand uh, by clicking on the raised hand symbol in the middle. Uh, one of the opportunities we have this evening, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Ellie Batrez, who is uh, my co-host, and uh, she is in fact fluent in Spanish, and so perhaps you could welcome everybody as well, Ellie. Sure. Um, like Doug said, my name is Eliana Batrez. Um, I'm Sustainable Contra Costa's virtual facilitator. Um, thank you for attending tonight. Hola, um, los quiero presentar a mí. Me llamo Eliana Batres y soy la facilitadora virtual para estos tipos de eventos. Son talleres. Um, y como dijo Doug, habrá uh, tiempo al final de nuestro taller para preguntas en español. Y también las pueden mandar en el chat y también en el Q&A function. Thank you. Could we move on to the agenda? Uh, so the evening uh, is laid out roughly like this. Uh, um, Doug Blakely, uh, I'm a program manager with Sustainable Contra Costa. And then Ellie will be speaking uh, about a program called the Cleaner Contra Costa Challenge. Um, and so she'll introduce you to that program and some of the opportunities to monitor and reduce your carbon footprint at the personal and family scale, uh, household scale. Uh, I'll be speaking about the Bayran Home Plus program uh, quite a bit of detail in there and quite a few opportunities to be able to ask questions throughout that uh, portion of the presentation. Following that, uh, Larry Waters from Electrify My Home uh, is joining us this evening. Um, and also uh, Rebecca Milliken, a uh, homeowner from El Cerrito will be with us uh, talking about a project uh, that Larry has done for her and her family on their home in El Cerrito. Uh, following that, uh, we will open it up for general conversation and discussion, uh, certainly a good opportunity for homeowners to be able to ask questions, uh, very specific questions about their own particular uh, situation that they may be considering something to be done on their home. And Larry and Rebecca and uh, uh, Ellie and I will all be here uh, open to take the questions at that point. We will then wrap up and uh, maybe a few closing thoughts. And uh, basically that will be the end of the evening. At this point, I would like to turn it over to Ellie so that uh, she can introduce you to the Cleaner Contra Costa Challenge. Thank you, Doug. Um, I am here to talk to you all about the Cleaner Contra Costa Challenge, which is Sustainable Contra Costa's uh, main project that we work on. Our goal for the challenge is to make it simple, easy, and even fun for people in Contra Costa to learn about 
the solutions we have on the climate and how to live sustainably. Uh, we created the challenge to be a place where you can find actions that will not only have an impact on the climate, but also will help you save money, keep our air cleaner, improve our health and create local jobs. Um, a really great uh, opportunity for this challenge as well is to work with others. Um, you can work with your friends, neighbors, other parents, or faith community among many to take actions together in a group. Um, and like I mentioned, we are representing Sustainable Contra Costa, which is a nonprofit organization started in 2008 to educate and inspire people to live sustainably in order to have a clean and healthy community and planet. Um, SCOCO has now grown into a community of citizens, students, educators, and organizations working together for ecologically sustainable, economically vibrant, and socially just communities for all. So, um, these are our city partners for um, the Cleaner Contra Costa Challenge. So a big thank you to all of them. Um, and this is the home screen of the Cleaner Contra Costa Challenge. So to get started on this, you'll go to cleanercontracosta.org. Um, like I said, this is what our homepage looks like and it's really easy to sign up. Um, you can just click the join the challenge button or sign up to create an account. Um, and the website is also available in Spanish, which is great. So I have a poll for you all and I want to launch it. Hmm. Okay. So I have a question for you all and it is, what are the largest contributors to greenhouse gas emissions? And of these, our options are electricity use, home heating, transportation, food and waste. So I'll put those options in the chat since I can't see my poll right now. And please let me know which of these um, basic household activities account for the majority of greenhouse gas emissions? Thank you for our first response. Awesome, thank you. We'll give it a few more seconds. So I see a lot of you are saying transportation, uh, home heating, food, electricity, agriculture, electricity, great. Um, thank you for your responses. So 40% of US emissions actually come from these five basic household activities. Um, that's electricity use, like you all mentioned, transportation, um, home heating and food and waste. For most cities, 40 to 70% um, or more of basic emissions come from the residential se sector. Um, so we have the power to reduce our emissions um, by these little actions uh, that all add up, um, which is amazing. And we have some solutions to offer you. So um, like I mentioned previously, these solutions will help you save money, improve your health, uh, create jobs and work towards global sustainability and equity. So the road to reducing emissions, <laughs> this is our road to reducing emissions. And one thing that we start with is recycling. That's really well known, reduce, reuse, recycle. But these are some other options that we have here um, to take collective efforts and by doing things like making renewable energy. Um, eating lower down the carbon chain, using clean renewable energy. Um, if you use your electricity before 4 p.m. or after 9 p.m., your electricity um, is cleaner, is made in a cleaner way, um, and practicing sustainable agriculture. Um, that might be a little nebulous. So I wanted to share um, some quick actions for everyone. So. The Cleaner Contra Costa has different categories, um, such as quick boost on a budget, um, food waste, electricity. And some things you can do are as simple as 
turning stuff off, which you could always stand to turn something off if something's plugged in, but you're not using it, just unplug it and you're saving energy right there. Um, combined park trips, if you're gonna run errands, um, try and bunch them up and then take the most efficient route um, from your home and then to do your errands and other bigger actions like installing solar panels or installing a heat pump water heater, which we will talk to you about in a little while and doing things like eating down, farther down the carbon chain. Um, for the Cleaner Contra Costa challenge, our average household goal that we recommend is trying to reduce 5,000 pounds of CO2 in the first six months. And it's, it's much easier than you would think. <laughs> um, so some things you can do is lower your thermostat. Um, if you have your thermostat around 68 degrees, and you can, you can handle it or lower. Um, that's a great way to save energy and money in your home. Um, eating more plant-based meals, so replacing one, one meal a week with um, something that's plant-based, combining trips, like I mentioned, and doing things like choosing 100% green electricity. So once you sign up for the challenge, which only takes about a minute, um, you are going to want to sit down and, and take this more in-depth step, which is filling out your energy profile. It'll ask you questions about your different appliances, how often you use them. Um, and it also offers to link to your utility provider. Um, however, we don't collect any of this data. So you are putting it in so that you can see your household's own progress and we're not keeping the data or anything like that. Um, once you've done that, you can discover your starting impact. So um, how much, how many emissions your house um, is emitting at this time of your starting point, um, where you are relative to different places in the United States or even the region um, or area. And then you're able to find the actions for your household that correspond to um, places where you might want to uh, reduce, reduce your admission. So there are different categories. Um, some really great ones are hanging out at home, um, eat green and waste less, be water wise and be energy smart. All of them are really great and have really great actions. Um, but these are good places to start when you're starting the challenge. And some of the actions may be things that you already do in your home. Um, which is great. Um, each of our resources has, um, has a projected impact here based on um, the information that you add to your energy profile, um, but it also comes with some really great how-to guides and local resources. Um, so if you're wondering how to get started or what phases would, um, would be helpful to to, to complete these actions, we have resources for you and um, resources for the area where you live. If you notice, one of these is the Bay Run Home Plus uh, program, so you're in the right place. <laughs> um, you can also participate with your communities um, and you are able to compete with the households in your group and collectively take action and that's really fun. Or if you wanna have a healthy rivalry going, um, you can do something like that as well. And you can do that by joining one of our teams uh, for the challenge. Um, to date, the Cleaner Contra Costa Challenge has saved $337,303 and counting. Um, we have 2,321 households registered of our goal of 2,500, so we're really close. And we have actually saved 826 tons of CO2, and that's just amazing. And you can see some of the other stats right here. Um, like I said, you can get started at cleanercontracosta.org, and I'll put that um, in the chat for you all. And I'm gonna pass it back over to Doug. Thank you, Ellie. Uh, 
out of curiosity, uh, if any of the attendees have questions uh, for Ellie, we can open up the floor for about five minutes to take questions at this point. Uh, again, uh, you can use the Q&A function or the chat function or raise your hand. Any questions from uh, the audience this evening? It's a great resource. It's a free platform and it's really informative um, for you and the members of your household. So I uh, don't see any questions coming in right now, so we can definitely come back to this if you have them. Certainly uh, throughout the rest of the evening, if questions happen to come to mind, uh, by all means, please let us know and uh, we'll answer them either on the spot or uh, hold them until the latter part of the evening. So at this point, I'd like to talk uh, a little bit, give you an overview of what the Bay Wren program is all about. Uh, Ellie, if you could advance the slide. So Bay Wren stands for uh, Bay Area Regional Energy Network. And in fact, it is the nine counties that surround the Bay Area having come together to essentially come up with a program that offers standardized rebates to homeowners uh, to take steps that would improve the energy efficiency of their home, homes. Uh, in this particular case, and you may wonder where this money is coming from, um, it, you're probably familiar through your energy provider, uh, PG&E, uh, that PG&E will periodically um, give you an opportunity to get a rebate on a smart thermostat or change out your light bulbs or do various other things to reduce your energy use. Uh, through the California Util uh, Public Utilities Commission, uh, the utilities like PG&E have been under a mandate for about 20 years to uh, include conservation programs uh, as part of what, as part of their business model, really. And within that, uh, they have as part of their rate base, a certain amount of money that we're each paying for every kilowatt and for every therm that we use of natural gas uh, that is then um, used to support these conservation programs. Uh, it has been seen as being a better deal uh, to, fund and encourage, incentivize um, energy conservation as opposed to the way it used to be in the old days when uh, part of the rate base was to lay aside money so that they could build more generating capacity. So then uh, the nine counties have come together um, and they distribute the money back to the homeowners, to businesses and so on and so forth um, in ways that uh, help all of these different individuals and uh, households to be able to reduce their energy. So. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and there is uh, quite a number of different parts to it. I won't go into everything that's on this particular chart other than to say that uh, this is intended to be a comprehensive program that uh, also looks at uh, developing job opportunities. Uh, certainly it's all about developing or improving the quality of life in the counties around the Bay Area. And ultimately, of course, uh, we want to uh, take steps that will reduce the impact of climate change because that in itself has quite a number of different costs uh, to the public and to the communities that we live in from sea level rise to uh, air quality issues related to the fires and so on and so forth. Next slide. Uh, there are a number of different programs. Uh, this particular one that we're uh, uh, staging this workshop for tonight is the Home Plus Single Family Program. There are also programs for multifamily dwellings and uh, businesses and so on. In each case, uh, the idea is to incentivize folks, offer them various types of rebates and so on and so forth to reduce their energy use. Next slide, please. So, in any problem, in any home, it turns out that uh, we're far less energy efficient than we probably think we are. Uh, most of us live in older homes, uh, but it turns out that even new homes that have been built since uh, maybe even 2010, uh, as much as 50% of the energy use that goes into the home uh, it actually doesn't do what it's supposed to, whether that's heating or cooling. It dissipates, it uh, 
disappears into the attic space, uh, leaks out through uh, cracks around the doors and windows and so on and so forth. And uh, this list of items, you can probably recognize a few of them with regard to problems that you may be having in your own home, uh, from hot and cold rooms, uh, to drafty rooms, to condensation on the windows. Uh, and I think most of you would recognize that, particularly if you live in an older home, uh, that the furnace and AC units might be old. Uh, certainly the new ones that are uh, available on the market today uh, are usually uh, quite significantly more energy efficient than the older uh, models. Next slide, please. So one of the one of the areas that uh, we're trying to address here is in fact uh, indoor air quality. And nowadays, most of us, particularly over the last couple of years, have been spending a great deal of time in our homes. Uh, and it turns out that uh, problems with indoor air quality uh, are problematic for both adults, but even more so for children. Uh, asthma is an issue that's certainly gaining. Um, as we start to uh, become more aware of these problems, just as one example. Next slide, please. And I won't go into this at the moment other than to say that, uh, and Larry uh, Waters, when um, he joins us here in a few minutes, uh, we'll have an opportunity to talk in a little bit more detail about this, but basically it comes down to uh, being able to test your house to determine uh, how much leakage you've got, how airtight the house is, and to be able to pinpoint the problem spot so that something can be done about it. Next slide. And air leakage, uh, this is just a diagram that shows some of the places. Uh, a lot of it gets into the attic or crawl spaces. Uh, some's going out through the windows, uh, other locations. I'm sure Larry could go into it a lot more detail than I could on this. Next slide. Insulation, uh, insulation standards over the years have increased quite a bit. Uh, older homes, uh, in fact, probably had no insulation in them. Uh, homes from the 70s and 80s might uh, have uh, maybe an R20 rating in the attic. And if you had insulation in the walls, it was two by fours, which at most gives you R13. And of course, uh, insulation quite uh, like everything else in the home can age. Um, if you've got blown in insulation as in the picture on the right, uh, that will compact over time. Uh, current code for insulation in homes is R38 in attic spaces. Uh, the Bay Rim program um, asks homeowners to go to an R44 rating in the attic space and will pay uh, to help the home homeowner establish that. Next slide. One of the areas uh, in terms of indoor air quality that's been a real problem is in fact that there's a lot of uh, waste products that come off of uh, particularly the natural gas cooking uh, cooktops that many of us have. Uh, it turns out that you have the uh, waste products from the burning of the natural gas and you also can end up with quite a few other uh, uh, burn products that come off of the cooking process itself. Uh, one of the items that uh, Bayren uh, does support in terms of rebates is installation of induction cooktops, uh, which is kind of next generation electric, but it actually use an, uses an electromagnetic method for actually heating the food and gets away from uh, the hot surfaces that you even have with an electric cooktop, uh, the old fashioned uh, resistive coil variety. And electrification. Um, increasingly, the, uh, the Bayren program, and in fact, uh, many of the industry groups are supporting uh, ways in which you can get rid of the natural gas in your home. Uh, most of us are using natural gas for our furnaces, we're using it for our water heaters, uh, as well as cooking in many cases. And uh, the incentives uh, to be able to switch over to electric, uh, primarily, uh, to get people to move to, uh, in the case of, of uh, furnaces and water heaters, uh, heat pump technology. And again, Larry can go into that in a great deal of detail. It is definitely the most efficient way. It is the cleanest and most efficient uh, method for being able to heat uh, and cool your home both. 
So where do I start? What are the issues that you have to go through uh, to be able to participate in the Bayram program? Next slide, please. So there is a website. Uh, it was on the flyers that you received uh, when uh, you received the invitation for this. The website is www.bayrenresidential.org. And that is sort of a clearinghouse for all sorts of different information, such as uh, online home evaluation kits. Uh, there is an energy advisor service where they can answer very technical questions for you. It provides the details on the cash rebates that are available. And it also uh, will send you to a uh, tab where you can find the participating contractors. Uh, the work must be done by a Bayren approved contractor. And uh, there's about 45 or 50 of them across the nine county area. Uh, and they cover everything from HVAC to installation to, uh, in fact, to electrification and various other things. So you can find, uh, you can search by location, you can search by uh, technical specialty, you can also search by language and other, um, other ways to be able to narrow down the contractors which, that you'd like to speak with. Next uh, slide. This is, uh, if you go into the bayranresidential.org site uh, and you go in under the list of resources, there is in fact a PDF that provides the most recent list of rebates. Basically what it comes down to is that each home, each dwelling is eligible for up to $5,000 in rebates, but the money is broken out into uh, smaller quantities uh, based on individual actions that you might take. So for example, if you are sealing the old ducts that you've got in the home, uh, you can get $200 for that. Um, if you actually go to a higher standard, uh, instead of a less than 10% leakage down to less than a 5% leakage, you can get $800. If you get a smart thermostat, uh, which would be a Nest or Honeywell or any of the other outfits do have uh, variations of these, uh, you can get $150. Uh, attic insulation, as I mentioned, uh, you have to meet a R44 standard, and it may well be that you're already at maybe an R38, and so in actual fact, you can qualify for kicking it up the extra uh, six, uh, the, the, the extra six uh, interval. Uh, in this case, it pays by the square foot, 75 cents per square foot, up to $1,000 for the attic space. Um, up to uh, $1,000 for um, insulating your walls, uh, R13 in the two by four framing, R19 in the two by six. These are just examples. The next couple of pages will be the same. Next slide, please. Um, this is an example of, of the difference in a situation where you probably already have uh, a gas fired water heater and if you buy a higher efficiency gas water heater to replace the one that you have now, you can get $400 back against that cost. If you were, though, instead of going with a gas fired unit, you were to switch out, get rid of the natural gas entirely and put in a, a heat pump water heater, you can get a thousand dollar rebate. And there are various, uh, as you can see, efficiency standards specifications that you have to meet. Next slide. And uh, these have to do with furnaces and air conditioners and so on. And again, the, uh, if you go with the heat pump technology, uh, the rebates are higher. Um, and uh, I'll leave it to Larry to explain some of the intricacies and fine points as to how that works. Next slide. And here's the induction cooktop. You can get uh, $300 towards that. And we're actually offering rebates now uh, to replace a natural gas clothes dryer with a heat pump clothes dryer. Now, one of the reasons that uh, we want everyone to work through a Bayren approved contractor is in fact that the contractor uh, serves both as uh, the party who will verify that work has been done that qualifies for the rebate, uh, given the fact that many of these things require that some calculation be made as to what the amount is, 
uh, the contractor uh, typically takes care of that. And uh, quite frequently, the homeowner is actually doing multiple items. Um, you'll see that tonight in the case study uh, with uh, Rebecca Milken, Milliken that uh, there were several uh, Bayron rebates that she uh, was eligible for. Uh, so all of those are totaled up. Contractor takes care of that. And in most cases, will also submit the paperwork to the county so that the homeowner can receive the rebate. Next slide, please. Uh, these are just uh, more items for which you can get various types of rebates. Um, uh, quite a list of them. They do change. They typically are revised or reviewed uh, once or twice a year. So it's always good to check back or talk to your contractor as you get ready to take on, undertake a project. Next slide. And so the question always comes up, why do we have to work through this contractor? Why can't I do the work myself? And I've just gone through most of the reasons for that. On top of that, of course, uh, the county and Bayren has a vested interest in making sure that the work is well done. So in, in essence, they're, uh, they're doing their own vetting of the contractors to make sure that uh, they're satisfied that the work will be, uh, will be up to the standards that it needs to be. Next slide. And uh, I mentioned uh, on the uh, Bayron residential.org site that there is a list of the contractors um, and a number of different ways that you can, uh, you can search through them, uh, maybe nar narrow them down. And just like any other project that you might do on your house, if you're putting in a new kitchen, you'd probably uh, reach out to two or three contractors to get different estimates or different quotes. And uh, we would certainly suggest that you do the same thing in this case. And as Larry will point out, uh, they're all quite happy to talk to you and, and work with you to be able to get your estimates done. Next slide. Uh, there are financing options of various types and kinds. Uh, you may or may not be familiar with some of these programs. Uh, the REAL program, uh, PACE, and so on uh, are offering preferred financing uh, over what you'd probably get if you tried to put it on your credit card. Um, but uh, won't go into too many of the details here. Uh, there's actually three or four programs. There's another one called HERO, H-E-R-O. Uh, all of these should be looked at and thought about carefully be um, before deciding to move ahead with any of them. Next one. And there are complimentary programs. So uh, you can reach the energy advisor. We, uh, the phone number is here. We will also have it on the closing slide this evening. Uh, oh, there we go. Thank you. Uh, the energy advisor is associated with the Bayren program uh, and you can reach them by telephone or by email. And uh, basically they are able to answer quite technical questions. If you get two quotes, and two different uh, central or two different uh, heat pump units are being um, spec'd out by the contractors. Uh, the, the energy advisor would be the individual or the group that could help you sort through which one of those might be the better choice for your particular situation. Next slide. Uh huh. And there is a home energy score. You can do this. Uh, there's also uh, more. Um, uh, I guess I'd call the more sophisticated methods for being able to uh, rate uh, the energy efficiency of your home, help you uh, identify some of the problem areas and uh, be able to, uh, you know, direct you towards uh, what the solutions to that might be. Note that there is a $200 rebate for getting one of these assessments done. Next slide. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Larry Waters, who is the principal at Electrify My Home. And uh, Larry will introduce his company and introduce uh, Rebecca uh, Milliken and the project that uh, they've worked on together in her home in um, the El Cerrito area. Larry, Rebecca. And thank you to everyone who submitted questions. We will definitely get to those um, in a little while. Thank you. Hello, everyone. 
Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Elena. Hi, Rebecca. How are you? Nice to see you. Good to see you, Larry. Um, my name is Larry Waters, and um, I was just crazy enough to retire from my cushy position at a company that I had worked at for a long time and strike out on my own as an electrification only contractor and um, help change the direction of uh, things in California a bit. I have not looked back. It's been a wonderful ride so far. I've met great people like Rebecca and done some amazing projects all over the Bay Area. We don't do anything with gas other than put caps on the lines. I'm, I'm so happy to say that. Uh, we design and install really efficient systems that you can barely hear that keep you so comfy and cozy and don't cost a lot to operate. So uh, we've been in business or I've been around the trade for almost 40 years. I know I probably don't look like that. I probably look like I probably started when I was six, maybe. I don't know. Uh, we've done hundreds of systems all over the Bay Area. I'm a advisory board member of the Building Decarbonization Coalition. Um, I take this whole stuff pretty seriously. I am a BPI certified building analyst. So when we come to your house, we can make a really, uh, we can make good recommendations based on real science, not based on what my sales book says you need. Um, we don't do cookie cutter applications. We're very, um, we're, we're very in tune to making sure our system fits your, not only your home, but your lifestyle. Um, I'm also a NATE certified technician. I've been holding NATE, certifi NATE certifications in heat pumps actually for over 20 years. And heat pumps have changed a lot in 20 years. If any of you have a bad opinion of a previous experience with a heat pump, it's not the same thing anymore. Uh, like I said, we're the first company out here to be dedicated to all electric home retrofits. We offer 100% comfort guarantee. Um, we are affiliated with some of the best brands out there and the systems we install have great guarantees. We work a little bit differently. Um, our, our carbon goals um, go all the way down to the way we deliver our processes. And so we're easy to deal with. We have a little um, application page on our website where you can fill out some information about your home. We will uh, take that information and go over it with a fine tooth comb and a uh, and we can create a, um, a pathway forward for you. Then we have a virtual assessment with you on a Zoom call for about an hour and get to know each other, get to know your project a little bit. At that point, I give you some budgetary numbers that you can go by. And uh, should you decide that you wanted to move forward, then we come out and do the assessment and audit of your home and measure for a load calculation um, and all of that all of that stuff we do. So that whole process is designed around saving carbon. If I'm not driving out to, to five houses a day, that saves a lot of carbon in the world. And that way uh, you can understand kind of the, the ease and complexities of this process before I ever have to wipe my shoes off on your doorstep. Uh, next slide, please. Um, gas versus electric. A lot of us, I don't know who's on this call in particular, but you know we've had times in this country where we've gone through electric uh, conversion. Some people bought electric houses and, and have electric ranges that they're not that satisfied with and maybe some experiences with some electric appliances that left you wanting more. But I will tell you, like everything else, technology has caught up with this industry dramatically. And the offerings that we have now for electrification are just amazing. Um, and they get rid of the gas. gas. Gas, you know, it leads to maintenance problems. We need bulky giant ducting for the gas. Um, they can be leaky and inefficient. And, and once we know the byproducts of gas and the, the carbon that's emitted from gas, and as well as the chemicals that are emitted from gas, um, people that really look at it understand that why would you want that in your house? It's just not good. Um, we have better ways of doing things now, not to mention the pollution and the carbon monoxide risk and 
if anybody has read the winter fuels report for 2021, the absolute rising cost of gas, um, all of that can be done away with good, clean electric uh, solutions. What's right with electric? They're more comfortable to live with. They're way safer. They're incredibly clean and they're economical to operate. Um, like I said, the solutions nowadays for electric are amazing. Next slide, please. This is Norvell Street, El Cerrito. This is our client, uh, Rebecca. She's on the call with us today. She just happens to be really in the know on this sort of thing. She is a city of Berkeley sustainability outreach specialist. Um, so uh, it was really kind of an kind of an honor and a privilege and a little bit of a uh, um, an ego booster, I would say, of dealing with her and and having her trust our company to do this job for her. It's, it's really meant a lot. Um, I met her uh, indirectly through the Berkeley Electrification Group, and. Um, you know, here's a, a, a really nice quote from her. Through the work, she knew the dangers of combustion and gas appliances, and boy, we found some in her house. Next slide, please. Um, so let's talk about uh, Rebecca. Let's just chat this thing through instead of rereading all about what we already know about. Your house is built in 48. How long have you lived there? So it's going to be about 19 years now that we've been there. Then that was long enough for you have, to have had a gas furnace. And then didn't you, you replace that gas furnace with another one, right? Well, actually, when we, soon when we moved in, I had my first baby and uh, of course the furnace blew, you know, new home, new baby. And we um, called in and we got top of the line gas furnace. And as it was done in those days, it was a huge system. So way too big for our house. We have a crawl space. So it came, you know, with vents out of the floor. And um, we did over the years get the house insulated. So it was a nice, tight and warm house. This was before the Bay Ren program. It was in a previous program, but we did not have good ventilation. And um, a few things happened in those years. So first I'll just say about my heating is that when you would turn that thing on, it's a small house. It literally like felt like an airplane was taking off. You know, it was like, Whoa, that, you could kind of feel it taking off and coming on and it would cycle on and off. And I totally knew when it was on and I totally knew when it was off, it was loud. So um, during that time, a few things happened. I mentioned one is that, you know, I started to do this work and I knew that having gas in the home wasn't good. And in fact, we did some air testing and we found out that every time we turned on our gas water heater, which I know you've got some um, pictures of, which happened to be in our kitchen, we were letting out pollutants. And every time my gas furnace was coming on and my gas stove. And again, I did not have proper ventilation. I do not have a hood. Um, the only thing we have is a bathroom fan. And so they said to me, you need to keep all your windows open in your house when you are cooking, when your water heater is running. You know, I've got kids in the house. My, my younger one um, had childhood asthma and allergies. And it was like, oh man, I am poisoning my family. So long and short of it, um, when the fires first began, I think it was maybe the paradise one. And, they, and we, you know, here we were in El Cerrito and they said, close all your windows. And I said, there's no way I'm going to turn on my gas appliances. I don't have proper ventilation. I know they're putting toxic stuff into my home. So that kind of began this process and I had to do it slowly. Um, but about a year ago, we were finally ready and it was great because all these Bay Ren rebates were there. And I reached out to Larry and um, we, we got this thing going. And, and you tell me when, Larry, I can tell them what it's like now to live, to live in this house. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of the houses that were built around this vintage have the exact same problem, right? They have the water heater that's in the house. Um, a lot of them just, if they have any kitchen ventilation at all, it's just like the little fan in the ceiling up there that just kind of blows into the attic. That, that's always amazes me. Um, and, and it's, and it's really prevalent out there and people don't really understand, um, the, uh, the severity of the problem. And just like everything else, we've learned a lot about this in the, in the last about a decade and a half. And, um, and we've really found out that a lot of these appliances in our house, they're, they're really risky to own these things. One of the things that always, um, 
it makes me scratch my head as being an air conditioning guy for so many years. I was a service tech for many years and we would go and find these furnaces that were just death traps and they were cracked heat exchanger and all this. And we would share the information with the customer and we turn right around and sell them another gas furnace for their house. And, and so, um, when I came into the light and I realized all of this stuff going on, some of the things we were doing back then, and even I was doing back then in, in a previous life are, are a little scary by today's standards. But um, so your experience with this is, is um, how comfortable is your house? So it is amazing now. So basically um, I reached out to Larry and I, and I want to let folks know that before I reached out to Larry, we realized that we had gotten rats in our call space. Our call space was not sealed. And they got into our ducts. So we would turn on that gas furnace that sounded like an airplane. And there was ducting flying up, you know, out of our thing. So we'd been using um, just portable electric heaters, which, you know, our energy bill shot up way then. Of course, we were cold all the time. So when I talked to Larry, we realized that we'd have enough space on my electric panel. He was able to come in. And in a really short time, I think um, we, he did the heat pump water heater. That was like a day or two, and then was able to take out our gas furnace and put in this heat pump that provides heating and cooling. And of course, I don't know where we are talking to folks in Contra Costa. Those of you in Eastern Contra Costa are used to air conditioning, but those of us in West Contra Costa, it's pretty rare. And of course, when I first moved here, you know, there was maybe a day or two that was uncomfortable. Well, we know that has changed with, with climate change. And there have been so many uncomfortable days. So Larry put this system in and it is silent. I can't tell you how many neighbors I have brought over now and they turn it on and they go, it's on? And they go, yeah, stick your hand by the vent, you know, and then they can feel the heat or they can feel the, the, the air conditioning coming out. And that system does both, it's amazing. He also put in this beautiful heat pump water heater that um, he'll show you some pictures of in our garage. So it came out of our kitchen. So that is our new heat pump water heater. And um, the way it looks kind of like your gas, um, the gas heat water heater I had, except with this heat pump unit. So it's basically taking in the, the warm air, pushing out nice cool air, and it superheats the water. And uh, the neat thing is, with it is that it's Wi-Fi enabled. So you can use your phone to turn it on and off if you're going to be on vacation. But I really, I'm, I'm kind of cheap, all right? So I don't like to pay a lot for my electricity. I know that it is you know, less expensive to use this before three, four o'clock when those rates kick up. So I set this to only run between 12 and three each day. And I'm a family of four. This is a 50 gallon tank. So we kind of superheat it for a couple of hours each day. And then I shut it off. It doesn't run again until the next day. And we have four of us and we all like to shower at night. And I have teenage sons. So just to give you an idea, some of those showers are long. We have plenty of hot water so and it's and it's instantaneous um it's been great um so it has been really life-changing especially during the pandemic i used to go into the office every day and i have been teleworking and i i love being here you know i'm so comfortable versus in the office where it was always hot and cold and drafty and all those things um so it's it's really transformed our space um and we have since then we've been able to put in solar so that will further bring down our costs and we did put in an induction range and i and we got our bay Ren rebate for that as well so it's been, it's been great working with the bay Ren program um, and the other really exciting thing is we took oh this is pretty funny this was our old gas furnace this was the exchanger unit it was so big it, it was so hard to get it out of the crawl space door it was it was um, pretty hilarious hearing the guys grunts you know on either side of it uh, well, I think I had one of my guys kind of trapped on the other side of that thing for a while while they were trying to figure out how to get it out. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah it's, what, what amazes me about this whole thing is when we did the load calculation on your house, I mean, it really came in at somewhere around 18,000 BTUs, I think is what we ended up putting in there. And this was a 60,000 BTU furnace. And to put that into perspective, um, I mean, if I were to install a gas appliance these days, which I will not do, but the, the a, a 60,000 BTU furnace in, in, in a relatively well-sealed house is good to about 2,500 square feet. And then it's still going to be a little oversized if the house is tight. And, and 
so this thing was just massively oversized. So you must have had that that the not only hearing the jet come on, but it must have been a little bit about oh, it's getting cold on the couch. Ooh, it's getting hot on the couch. Oh yeah, then- it would get hot, cold, hot. You know, it was, um, <laughs> and it was just it was so loud. And now I'm telling you, we just it's we know that the system is working because they feel really comfortable. Um, and the other thing I really love, Larry, about the system you put in is that it just has this nice fan too. So I can use that. You know, we often because the house is well insulated. We can sometimes just run the run the fan and and so we're filtering and getting nice fresh air in and so the house doesn't have that stuffiness anymore that it used to get um and we don't even sometimes you know we we really just recently turned the heat on and have you know so so that combination of that well insulated home and then having this system that's been sized right yeah it's amazing um what i found when i put my own system in um is that I just stopped fiddling with the thermostat all the time. Mine was kind of, mine was too big too for many years because I had tightened up the house and kind of kept an old system around and and um, so that's one of the things. So so you say that you put solar up and then did you have a chance to run this system before you put the solar up? What what was it costing it you to run it? So you installed it right around Christmas time. I remember last year and we didn't get the solar installed until August. And what was, what was really amazing is that, and at the same time, we actually took out our gas line, right? So we totally took it out. We had pg e came and decommissioned it at the street. And our bills did not increase at all, even though we were all electric and we did not have solar. And that's because we were using those inefficient, um, you know, those portable electric, uh, you know, portable um, heaters, and they just sucked energy. So even though we were all electric, we didn't see a bump. It was minimal. Um, and now the solar's in. Uh, and of course, our savings are going to be more. Uh, we, ironically, we haven't gotten our bill in about four months just because PG&E has been a little slow in uh, getting our system over. So, um, but we can just, we can see our usage and they're so efficient. It's, it's just impressive. And as I said, that heat pump water heater, you know, we kind of figured out, oh, we only need to run it for a couple hours a day. That's it. That's and, amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. So a takeaway on this is realistically, you can switch to electric and, and have a more comfortable home, not live with the temperature swings and really not affect the cost of operation too much. So you don't need solar to install one of these systems. You just put solar in and you're able to cancel out the operational cost of both the heating and the cooling, which you can never do with a gas appliance. I tell people all the time, you cannot you can't get rid of a gas bill with a solar panel. And so this is the, this is a long-term solution, even for people that don't want to add solar right away is let's get you switched over to electric. And then, then we can establish what your new usage is. And then we can put up the solar to, to cancel out that usage. That's something, if you buy a new gas furnace right now in today's world, especially because they're really phasing this stuff out and gas prices are extraordinarily high the um, you're really setting yourself up to not be able to electrify your home for another 10 years. So the opportunities are there. And I tell you, being in the trade for 40 years, the incentives right now are just crazy. I mean, there is so much incentive money available to offset the cost of these systems and, and help and help consumers kind of get into here. And, uh, and something, there was an interesting thing that popped up um, a month or so ago is that um, Energy Star, I don't know if anybody's heard that, but Energy Star now says they are not going to call any gas appliances their most efficient option, which is, which is kind of shows where we're going with this. Um, but back to your project, um, we, we installed, we talked about the filter and the silent operation of that system, one part of that was because we put a big giant air intake in there, like a big duct to pull the air through. So there's not a lot of resistance in that system. Um, so that's what helps really quiet it down. So you got all new duct work. Um, we put in really good insulation on the duct work and we sealed it up good. I, I remember we had to come back and put another piece of tape on. Yeah, um, yeah. They t- because the house was small and tight, you know, it and they come and do the testing, which is all part of it. Um, you know, it's just one tiny bit of it off and, and Larry's team came right back out and, 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 and dealing with you guys with the rebates was great. Literally um, our installer, you know, he handed me a piece of paper, I signed it and then I got checks in the mail. And 
the Bayron program notifies you, you get these emails, you know, it has been submitted, it's been mailed, and then you receive it. So um, you do need to put the money up front, uh, but you know, they, they come quickly. Um, so it was, it was really straightforward on that end. Yeah. And right now we have some great financing products available as well. Like there's the go green financing, which is, it's got a really great entry level on almost any credit score. There's no fees for the consumer or the contractor. So we don't have to pass any fees along to you for that program. So that's, that's really a great program as well. Really easy to navigate. In fact, we do all the navigation for you. So um, do we have another slide here? I don't think we do. I think okay, that's so, the last of it. But uh, uh, if I could jump jump in for a couple minutes here, Larry. Um, absolutely. One is, uh, you know, I'm realizing based on Rebecca's comments this evening that uh, the rebate total is out of place or is is uh, is lacking the induction cooktop. So that's an, another three hundred dollars. It would be uh, plus the nineteen fifty. Uh, we do have quite a few uh, questions that have started. Uh, to come in from um, the attendees this evening. So uh, what I would like to do, um, Ellie, perhaps you could uh, read them out. And I think Larry, uh, you know, that will uh, touch on some of the things that uh, maybe were still on your list here. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask Rebecca one more question? Sure. How amazing is it boiling water in 92 seconds? Oh my God. So I actually, because I told you guys that we didn't have ventilation, we had a little microwave hood and even that died. So there was no way I was going to cook on gas. I was using portable induction um, hobs that you can get for 50 bucks. You can get them on Ikea at Amazon. And then we got this range in and it has been so fun to bake again because we've just been using a toaster oven and literally to clean it because it's a smooth surface. So nothing burns in. You just take a sponge and wipe it and it's, it's done. So it is a joy um, to be cooking and knowing that I am not putting pollutants out to my family. I mean, that was that was the hardest thing for me as a mom. It was like, I'm hurting my kids. So I just yeah. feel so much better about that. Yeah, I just love that you can make pasta and like, you know, I mean, you get that water going in no time. It's just fantastic. All right, let's hear those questions. All right, so I will be asking you all the questions in the order that they came in, so. Uh, the first question is, will you help replace the entire range instead of just the cooktop? Yeah, I mean, so there's various um, induction ranges available too. I, I, I had a freestanding range in my house um, and I searched around a little while and found the one I wanted, found it on sale somewhere. And, um, and so, yeah, you can get a whole 36 inch range. They have the 30 inch ranges. Every, every, every type of cooking appliance has its has its kind of um, uh, induction cousin available. So whatever whatever needs to fit in there. You do, in, in some cases, if you have electric now, it's just a unplug and replug. But if you have gas, you will have to think about the electrical circuit. Um, okay, great. Um, next question, does Bayron pay for crawl space insulation? That sounds like a Doug question. Well, it, I'm, I'm going to uh, ask, well, Larry, I'm going to bring you into the conversation on this one. Um, okay. Basically, uh, yes, we talk about attic uh, space, but the same rebates that are available for attics are available if you want to insulate your crawl space. Uh, assuming that, I think you still have to go up to the same level. You still have to hit an R44, is that correct? Or have you encountered that problem? I think that the crawl space insulation has a, has a lower number and it's bats that have to be installed under the floor. Um, I, I think it's R30 or R um, for the floor. But the question about the floor is, do you really need floor insulation? And that's something that, that um, there's reasons why you would need floor insulation maybe the best solution is a vapor barrier under the house and eliminating part of the ventilation under there that can bring the floor closer to uh, the ambient temperature inside the house as well. The, the thing about floor insulation is when you put it up inside there, gravity starts working on it almost right away. And over time it can, it can pull down. And as soon as it doesn't make contact with the wood on the floor anymore, it loses some of its R value. So um, I believe that the, 
you're right. The, the rebates are available for it, but make sure that it's the right thing to do. Talk to somebody from the Bayrin program and uh, call the Bayrin home advisor. Um, they can help you with that as well, but just make sure it's a, it, that, that it's, it's really going to be beneficial before you spend the money on it. Yeah. I'll just put in a plug for the Bayrin advisors too. So, um, you know, I, I, I knew of Larry and I knew of others, but I really, I had a lot of conversations with my Bay Rent advisors back and forth during, during that process, which was, which was really helpful. And as I also mentioned, I work for a city doing sustainability outreach, and I'm always re referring people to the Bay Rent advisors. Awesome. Okay. Um, the next question is, if I currently have an electric stove, will I be eligible for a rebate if I get the induction stove, if, if they get the induction stove cooktop. So, so in other words, they've got a resisted, uh, resisted coil cooking surface uh, and replace that with the induction. I believe that that qualifies, correct? I think that, yeah, I think that does. And the, they, they want you to upgrade that to that induction range. So well, it's, it's and much more efficient. Much yeah. More and efficient. what's the criteria for, for, um, for getting that rebate, Re Rebecca, is it? You, I just looked online. It's real simple. Um, actually the Bayron residential just, I just noticed revamped its website and if you can look um, under each item, it does say that your new range, so range is a combination stove and the cooktop. So that, um, or if you just do a cooktop, it must replace an existing natural gas range or cooktop. Um, new cooktops, okay, may not be induction or electric hybrids. So it says you got to be replacing the gas to get the three hundred dollars. So that's the it's, it's, that's a decarbonization rebate. Then so, yeah, okay, yeah. got it. Okay, but you but know what? It's worth checking. These things are changing, and the rebates are becoming more expansive all the time. Yeah, and if your old electric range is driving you crazy and you just don't like the hot coils, man, it's just an improvement in life. Um, it's and what is the rebate on the stove? Is three hundred? Three hundred. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't let three hundred dollars keep me from living with an induction range. I mean, they're amazing. Um. Yes, and also thank you, Rebecca, for sharing that resource. Um, the Bay Run Residential website is totally revamped, and it looks really cool. Um, and this is a great place to find uh, this information as well. Um, okay, the next question is, how much is the rebate for a single family home solar panels? And which company would you recommend going through? I'll take that one. Uh, unfortunately, we don't cover solar. Uh, and part of it is because we do have a cap of $5,000 per dwelling. Uh, that doesn't go very far on big ticket items like solar or, uh, for example, uh, putting in double pane windows and various other things of that type. Um, this is where the financing options come into play. Uh, you can cover solar, you can cover uh, double pane windows. And in fact, uh, some of the programs will even cover other types of, um, uh, if you want to remodel your kitchen or a bathroom or something like that. Uh, a certain portion of the funding under those programs uh, can in fact be applied to redoing your kitchen as well as putting in the double pane windows or the solar. So uh, those would be the types of things to look at. Uh, Bayren simply doesn't have that. And when they looked at the various measures that they wanted to incentivize, uh, they were looking at the maximum uh, efficiency bang for the dollars that they had available. Awesome. Um, do Solano County residents qualify for these programs? Absolutely. All Absolutely. Nine, yeah, all nine of the Bay Area counties. Uh, this is standardized across all of the counties. So what we're talking about here tonight uh, works in Solano as well as it works in Santa Clara, as well as it works up in um, Napa or any of the other counties. So uh, all nine of the counties work together to uh, administer and uh, determine what sorts of things will be paid for and how much. And you know what, we, we are actually located up in Solano County. So we're like neighbors. So you just give us a call and we'll chat about that. Thank you. Okay. Um, what do you recommend for a wall furnace? 
Well, Bayron has a program for replacing wall furnaces with a, a single wall heat pump system. So it is an electric heat system with cooling and it serves uh, the one room that you would have your, your wall furnace in. Um, there is a sizable rebate for that. And there is also a new tech program rebate for that. So the, um, the incentives are really good for that. You can, you can decarbonize that, get rid of that very, very dangerous. Uh, wall heaters are probably the most dangerous out of all heating systems. Um, you, you get rid of that, that very dangerous system and put in a clean electric uh, wall mounted heat pump system. Um, enjoy cool comfort in the summer as well as nice warm uh, fan forced heat in the winter time, which is one of the things that most wall furnaces don't provide is that kind of fan forced air. And, um, and, and they're great to live with. And there's some great incentives on that. Um, oh, what was it that you said fan forced? Yeah, fan for when you when you have the heat pump um, mini split, it has a fan that moves the air in the cooling and the heating mode. And traditional wall furnaces don't have that they just, they work off of gravity and kind of a movement of air through the house. And you'll talk to people that have wall furnaces, and they generally say it's really hot in there and really cold everywhere else. So the the heat pumps will help circulate the air through the house and make it more comfortable as well. Great. Thank you. Um, what was the cost of the duct replacement for the El Cerrito home? Um, I believe it was rolled into the project. And um, generally, it depends on the, it, it's hard to quote duct systems without seeing them because there's a complexity to them. Um, you can always find somebody that'll just put some new material under the house in the same way that the old stuff was done. And um, there's probably a pretty fixed price for that. But when we do duct systems, we do load calculations and, and, and determine how much airflow you need in each space, each room, so that our duct systems actually provide the right amount of air for each room. And also there's, there's different, there's different um, environments, right? If the duct system is underneath the house and you don't have a lot of crawl space, that, that generally costs a little bit more. Um, if it's in the attic space and it's really easy to get to, that just generally costs a little bit less. Um, but depending on the size of your house, you can look between $300 and $550 per duct run is pretty good average. Oh, uh, and we've got the amount of the Bayran rebates for the work. Could you back up one slide, uh, Ellie? Um, could you give us sort of an idea as to what the total was for that work? Uh, and I don't think we need to be specific, but maybe just to get an idea as to what percentage was covered by rebates. Do you remember exactly, Rebecca? I think I think this amounted to about ten percent, right? On yeah. that comprehensive uh, actually, project, it was it was more than. I'm, I'm, I just pulled up my. Um, yeah, it was about 10%. I just pulled up my, my original invoice um, of, what, of what the project was. Yep. And, and, as Larry, yeah. and as Larry just mentioned, and I just became aware of this too, he mentioned these tech rebates that are um, going out to contractors that I was just made aware of um, that are hopefully we're, we're going to see even lower prices in the future. So that, as I learned, are things that you can um, stack along with your Bay Run rebates as well. So those will be kind of incentives to, to help the contractors bring down the price too. I, I guess I would say a couple of things just uh, based on the projects that I've seen that the Bayran rebates typically will come in someplace between 10 and about 20% of the cost of the project. And, uh, you know, I think it, it's important to be clear that what we're looking at is a situation where uh, this is a little bit like buying the toaster and then you send in the coupon afterwards and you get 10 or $20 back on it. Um, it's an incentive to get you uh, to, to make or to take steps that will improve the efficiency of your home. You're going to benefit from improved indoor air quality. You're going to uh, benefit from much lower energy costs overall. You're going to benefit from helping the climate and reducing CO2 and so on and so forth. So uh, there is an upfront cost. Uh, these are intended to be incentives, um, but 
it, you know, nobody should think that they're going to cover 100% of the cost. Now, that said, everything that Larry's saying, everything that Rebecca is saying, uh, the number of rebates, the number of different types of incentives that are being offered through a whole number of different channels. Some of them go to the contractors, some of them go to the homeowners. They're coming from the state of California. They're coming from uh, Bayren. They're coming from manufacturers groups and so on. Uh, frankly, uh, some of these things are almost getting close to covering 100% of the cost of what's involved. Yeah, yeah Doug, know, oh, go ahead. Sorry, well, Rebecca, two, go ahead. Two things. So one is just to say that I really think for the heat pump water feeders that what I'm learning about with these new incentives, it is really going to be covering the cost. So, so that's going to be a less expensive installation than your whole um, air conditioning and furnace. And again, as Larry said, it really depends on the size of your house and how many stories. But the other thing, Doug, I want to mention, you know, you talked about clearly in my house, it was the comfort, the noise, um, just the feeling of stuffiness. But for really for us, this was a, a air quality issue. You know, we had toxic air in our house. Um, Larry didn't have it in the slideshow, but he has this picture of my heat pump water heater that shows where it was like, I don't know, you have to explain it, Larry. But the other thing is my, um, my dear friend, her neighbor's house had a gas explosion. Um, and she was fortunate there was damage to her home, but you know, that was because of gas leaks and, and we hear about it happening and it's really, this is real. This was just a town away. Um, and I've had lots of neighbors where we're walking around smelling gas leaks. So I feel better knowing there is no gas in my house. And I told my neighbors, I said, in the case of an earthquake, you're lucky to have me as your neighbor too. <laughs> well, <laughs> And one other thing I'd add here too, notice on the rebates that uh, you did not get a rebate on the uh, central air unit. And the reason for that was that you had a furnace in there, but you did not have air conditioning before. When you put a heat pump in, you automatically get both the heating and the cooling. Now, nowadays, the houses, as you had mentioned, Rebecca, out there in your part of the world, many of them don't have air conditioning. I can tell you from many of the homeowners who call me, they're wanting to install it at this point. But uh, aside from the issue of whether or not there's more hot days is the fact that you were up against the fires uh, during the summer months and needed to close up the house just to keep the smoke out. And uh, again, the heat pump system handles that. And frankly, there must be some value in that well beyond the actual cost or the rebate that you may have gotten for it. Absolutely. You know, that was a major driver in our business this last year was um, people wanting to make sure they could shut their windows during the smoke events. And, and it's, it's interesting that we come to the realization that we now have a smoke season in California, but it's definitely something we need to um, take into consideration. We used to, especially over in your side of the Bay, it was you had the natural air conditioning and you just open your windows in the evening and it's all good. But people realize when the smoke's there that they've never lived in their houses with the windows shut before. And it gets a little stuffy and nasty and warm. And, and these systems just are a great respite for that. There's so many benefits to these systems. They're so appealing to, to, to anybody that has any real issue with their HVAC system. I mean, if you have to turn the TV up because your furnace makes a lot of noise when it comes on, this is a great solution. If it gets really hot when you're sitting on the couch, great solution. If, if you just want to do right by the environment, great solution. If you just want to save a bunch of money, great solution. I mean, there's just so many reasons why you would want this. Uh, Ellie, how many more questions do we have? Just make sure we've got enough. Time. Um, we have three more questions and I think one was answered. So let me, let me just say, uh, ask it again. Um, is there a limit to the number of rebates available per year? If that is intended to mean, is there a cap on the amount of money Bayren can give out? Uh, yes, it is, but they've not exceeded it that I'm aware of in all the years the program's been in place. So, uh, so far, nobody who has wanted to take advantage of the Bayren rebates has been turned down that I'm aware of, uh, assuming that their work qualifies. And the new tech program rebates, they're, they're actually, in case we're asking like if there's a cap on what you can get for your exact house, um, the tech rebate actually extended the central or the heat pump rebate to two systems per home, um, up to equivalent 
of about $9,000 on that, depending on what a customer would get. And then that tags along with the Bay Rin rebate. So there's, there's, there's plenty of incentive there. Um, if that's, if that's the angle, the question was coming from. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, and there. the tech rebate was for what service? The tech rebate is through the, uh, the tech clean California program and for various levels of heat pump efficiency, because just like anything else, these systems come in various efficiencies. So we only, we only installed systems that are at the top efficiency level. So I usually refer to that. Um, so the, the incentives for that are, just happen to have the thing right here. They start at, for a basic heat pump, is a $3,000 incentive all the way up to $4,800 for a good one. Now that, that incentive goes to the contractor. So most of the time the contractor is going to buy down the cost of your project with that or negotiate a split on it or something, but that the, they are incentivizing it on that side as well. So to add to that, um, first off, I mean, I'm, I'm hearing about more rebates every time I talk to Larry. Um, the other thing is that two or three years ago, Bayron was really about the only thing that was available to most homeowners. What we're seeing now is in fact, the realization of how serious the situation is that we're having to deal with. And uh, so there are far more incentives available. So to any homeowner considering any project, work with your contractor, do your research, uh, you know, make sure your contractor is being upfront with you about what's available. And, uh, you know, it's always good to have your own knowledge so that if the contractor misses something, you can remind him. Uh, Ellie? All right. Um, the next one, uh, how much does a heat pump system typically cost? Um, that's going to be, once again, that's going to be a perspective. Um, it depends on what the size of the house is, but I can tell you on a house where um, there's good existing ductwork in place and the house has a reasonably efficient shell, these systems are about the same cost as a traditional furnace and air conditioner. Um, if we're reinventing the wheel and kind of coming in and, and installing these in a home where there wasn't one before, that can drive the cost up a bit because we have to kind of install all the infrastructure with it. Um, but our average pricing is about what you would pay for a really high quality um, furnace and air conditioning from one of the big advertising companies out there. Um, you can get a heat pump installed and, and be eligible for a lot of incentive. Great, um, thank you. Okay, our next question is, I would like to upgrade a rental property I own. Do these rebates apply to single family rental properties? They, uh, the rebate goes to the dwelling. And so in this particular case, uh, as the owner of that rental unit, uh, you can certainly qualify uh, for rebates to improve the energy efficiency of that unit. Thank you everyone for the, for the little um, lapse in this. I am recording these answers, okay. Um, <laughs> Is the tech program rebate for heat pump air conditioning or heat pump water heating or both? It's for both. There's incentives for both. Great. Okay. Um, next question is, oh, and from Rebecca, we have whoever you choose. She recommends working with a Bay Run Home Plus contractor as they have been vetted. Yes, um, that's really important to remember. Um, you can't get Bay Run rebates if you don't um, go through a Bay Run contractor. That's very important. Okay, um, next question we have is on the heat pump water heater, does the waste, um, the wasted cold air get ducted into the house outside or can you choose based on the weather? Well, I mean, we can make a custom solution for whatever the house is, but we have to take into consideration things like pressure differentials and, and things. This is why you want to talk to 
um, somebody that's an actual has has a little bit of knowledge in building science. Um, it's going to depend on where the water heater is located. If we have a water heater that's in the garage and we want to pipe that cold air into the house, we are now effectively piping dirty garage air into your house. So while it sounds like a really groovy solution that's going to give me some free air conditioning, it can be, you know, do you really want to breathe that air that's coming from the garage? I mean, my garage is relatively clean, but I know I got some brake fluid and some paint thinner and some other stuff out there that I don't want in my house. Um, we can and we have devised a, a venting system on some of them where the cool air that goes into the garage helps warm or cool the garage off in the summer. And we put a little diverter valve on there in the winter time so it wouldn't make the garage colder. So, but we wanna be really cautious about mixing air from conditioned spaces to non-conditioned spaces. Well, but I, I guess I would say, Larry, just thinking about uh, my experience uh, was uh, the water heaters in the garage. So I was going to get the added benefit of air conditioning in the garage during the summer months. Uh, as another option, though, they could have vented it to the outside. Uh, and Absolutely. Or even the attic space, and we can pull from the attic space. As long as we're, as long as we're not venting from non-conditioned space to conditioned space, and we're not going to cause any pressure problems inside the, 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 the living space. I like your idea of the diverter so that uh, you don't freeze the garage during the winter months. Yeah, yeah, it works pretty good. It looks a little funky because it's a big thing there, but I mean, it works really good. If you're, if you're into how things work more than how things look, it's, it's, it's a great thing. Hey, form <laughs> over function. Right. function exactly. Over form. It's uh, us energy nerds. We'll look at that. You just paint it the same color as the wall. It'll disappear after a while. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. I think we've reached the end of our questions that have been asked in the Q and A in the chat. Um, so now is a great opportunity to ask any last questions you might have. Um, please submit them to the chat. Maybe we could have the closing slide while we. Yes, there we go. So uh, you still have time to uh, submit any additional questions, but um, at the same time, uh, just a reminder, uh, you can contact the energy advisor um, either via email or via uh, the 800 number, which is on the screen. And, um, Ellie, remind me, what happened here with regard to the request form? Is it part of the survey? Is it in the survey? Mm, no. Yeah, it, uh, actually, it, it, actually, it is. So, okay, so, so this is our pitch for everybody to take the short survey, which is... Oh, yes. Sorry. It's um, again. Please complete the survey uh, at, the, uh, at this particular website, sustainablecoco.org. Uh, forward slash Bayron one. Uh, and especially, please complete the survey if you would like to be contacted by the energy advisor. Uh, there's one of the questions in the survey that says, would you like to be contacted? Uh, if so, please leave contact information and we'll forward the information on to the energy advisors for a return call. So, um, Basically, uh, we, we really appreciate uh, everyone taking the uh, survey. It helps us, uh, but additionally, it is the location where you can fill out the request form. So additional contacts, um, by all means, please give me a call. If you have questions, um, I can answer general um, semi-technical questions uh, and refer you to the energy advisor if it gets beyond my level of knowledge. Uh, Ellie, particularly if you would like to ask questions in Spanish, uh, receive um, uh, information. Yes. Uh, sí, quiero tomar un momentito para um, para preguntar si hay algunas preguntas en español y quiero um, compartir con ustedes que estas um, respuestas de estas preguntas um, van a ser enviados por cole correo electrónico um, la semana que viene con toda esta información. And a third resource, uh, Damian Hardman uh, is actually the uh, man at the county uh, who runs the Bayren program. 
Uh, he wasn't able to attend tonight, but uh, he also can answer questions or direct you to further resources. Uh, if there are no other questions, I would like to thank our panel this evening, uh, Larry, Rebecca, thank you very much for coming in, uh, wealth of information. Uh, Ellie, thank you for your support and assistance, making it all run smoothly this evening. And to everybody who came, uh, we really appreciate your interest in the program. If there's anything further we can do to help you uh, improve the energy efficiency of your home, uh, please let us know. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Uh, thank, so thanks much. so much. It's always fun to talk about it. Thank you. And nice seeing you again, Rebecca. Yeah, you too, Larry. <laughs>